I worked as a food delivery driver during my first few years of college. Mainly, I would drive for DoorDash or Uber Eats. I didn't like making small talk with strangers and didn't want random people in my car, so I preferred delivering food over being a normal Uber driver. I did this for over a year with pretty much no issues, aside from the occasional customer mad that the restaurant messed up their order. Anyways, it was late Wednesday night, and I didn't have any classes in the morning, so I decided to make an extra few bucks and deliver for a little bit. I did four or five quick orders, and ended up about 20 minutes from my dorm. It was about 1am now, and I figured I should probably end it there and head back. The way the delivery apps work is pretty much you just drive around and wait for a random order to pop up and then it'll give you an estimate of how much you'll make and how far it is. Then you either accept or decline it. On my way back, I left the app running just in case there was a really quick delivery nearby. I got a few requests, but they were a bit too far and didn't seem worth it to me. But then another one popped up just as I was pulling into my dorm. It was about 12 miles away, but the payout was really big. I'd never seen anyone offer that much money before. I gave it some thought, as it was pretty far, but it was too much money to pass up. I accepted the offer and started the directions to the restaurant. A few minutes later, I arrived and pulled up their order so I could make sure I picked up the right stuff. As I walked through the doors, I noticed the customer had only ordered two items and the total was only over $6. This was really unusual, as typically the high paying orders are because of large deliveries of expensive food. This meant that they were just giving me a really big tip. I got the food and went back to the car. During the drive there, I was really just trying to understand why they would give such a big tip for such a small order. It was a little weird. But honestly, I just came to the conclusion that it was either just a mistake or they were trying to be kind. Although 12 miles wasn't too far from my campus, I had actually never been to this area. It was really nice with mostly gated off neighborhood communities and huge houses. Luckily, their house wasn't gated and I was able to just pull into the neighborhood. I looked at the homes as I passed by and realized that the tip money made a lot more sense now. The street was long though and I was just a couple minutes from the house when the customer sent me a text through the app. They told me to make sure I delivered the food to the right address when I pulled up. I figured maybe the map showed his neighbor's house or something, so when I arrived I sent him a text with a description of the house and asked if that was the right one. He replied no, and I waited for a little bit, expecting him to describe his house for me, but he never did. I sent him another text describing his neighbor's house, to which he replied no again. I was starting to get pretty annoyed with this guy, and tried calling him instead, but he refused the answer. He would ring a few times, and then he declined the call. I looked at the address again and then copy and pasted it into Google to try and look it up there. Doing this, I actually noticed that the number for the address wasn't a regular number. It had a subset of numbers on it. I'd never seen this before and wasn't even sure what it meant, so I searched the address on Google and looked at the results. When I zoomed in on the map, I saw that the address actually pointed to a spot right in between the two houses. Zooming in further, it looked like there was a really small garage, or maybe even a shed. It was barely visible. I looked up from my phone and moved my eyes to between the two houses, and sure enough, there was a small garage-like structure. It was just a few feet from the main house that my delivery app brought me to. I honestly wasn't sure what to expect, or why someone would even live there but I already came this far, so I wasn't about to walk away now. So I got out and started heading over. As I walked up the driveway, I could clearly see what the place was. It was pretty much just a large storage garage, 
probably meant for keeping an old car or something. I didn't see any normal door though, so I put the bag down by the garage door. As I began taking my phone out to take a picture for the app, a man came around the right side of the garage. I looked over at him, and he just stood still, staring at me. The guy was really creeping me out, so I said, It's right here for you, sir, as I pointed at the bag and slowly started walking away. Then he replied, telling me that this wasn't where he wanted me to drop it off. I turned around and noticed that he was still standing in the same spot. Um, sorry, where did you want me to put it? I said, starting to get really uneasy about the situation. He pointed around the back of the garage and said that the door was over there. At that point, there was no way I was going to follow that guy to wherever he was trying to get me to go. I just kind of stood there for a moment, then said sorry and quickly walked back to my car. I looked over one more time before driving away and the man was walking back behind the garage, but he left the bag of food. I got out of there and drove back to my dorm, shaking the whole way back. Something about that whole thing felt very off, and the fact that it was in a really nice neighborhood made me even more confused. The more I thought about it though, I realized just how strange it was that he needed to specify for me not to deliver to the main house, and that he refused to take the food unless I followed him to behind the garage. I'd never had to call the police before in my whole life, and I ended up not calling them this time either, as I really wasn't sure if maybe he was just some weird harmless guy. Anyways, it freaked me out for a few days, but eventually I got over it and continued doing deliveries in my spare time. Nothing else happened, though a couple weeks later I had another big order pop up on my app, and the area of delivery was the same. I obviously declined it, but I couldn't help but think about whoever ended up accepting that order and what happened to them during their delivery. It was the beginning of fall, and I worked as a cashier at a small store near my apartment. My usual shift ended at 9pm, and then I'd usually go do food deliveries for a couple of hours before heading home. I actually enjoyed doing deliveries at night, as the roads weren't busy and most other delivery drivers would work during the day and would take all the orders, so I'd actually get more orders to do at night. Anyways, I had just gotten out of work and set up my app to get ready to do some deliveries. The first one that came in was quick and only took about 15 minutes. Then I waited for a few minutes before the next order came in. It was a good payout, and the delivery address was 20 minutes away from where I was. I headed over to the fast food restaurant to pick up their food, then started making my way over to the house. The town I live in isn't too big, and has a lot of empty plots of land. There's the main center of town, which is where my apartment is, and most of the restaurants. Then, about 10 minutes out, there's a lot of farmland, and the houses are much more spread out. Almost all of the deliveries I get are within the town area, but every once in a while I'll get a delivery further out into the farm area. I assumed this was going to be a farmhouse since it was 20 minutes away, however, the app said that the address was located in a small neighborhood area just off of a small highway. I didn't like delivering to isolated farmhouses at night, as it just kind of creeped me out, so I was happy to be delivering to a neighborhood home. Once I got off the highway, I turned left and started making my way down the road toward the neighborhood, but almost immediately, I got a call from an unknown number. I declined it as I thought it was just a scam, but just a few seconds later, they called again. Figuring it was probably the customer, I accepted it. Hello? I asked. A few seconds went by with no response, so I just hung up. But then again, just a few moments later, the same number called me. I answered, and almost immediately a guy speaks and tells me I turned the wrong way. 
I asked him what he meant, as I had the map up and it says that I'm going the right way. But he said his address gets messed up on the delivery app, and that he always has to call and let the drivers know where to go. I said okay, and asked him how to get there. He told me that when I got off the highway, I needed to take a right from that road, then take the third left. He mentioned it was a gravel path that led to his farmhouse at the end. I told him I'd be there in a few minutes, and turned the car around. I've had multiple customers call me before to tell me that the address was a little off, or to give me directions on unnamed roads, as it was pretty common out here, so I honestly didn't think much of it. I passed the highway that I turned off of, and continued until I found the third left, and turned onto the gravel path. The path went into a small forest of trees, and it was really dark. Again, I didn't like these areas at night, so I was definitely a little nervous driving down this isolated gravel road. Once I started getting nervous, I began thinking about how strange it was that the map had taken me so far in the opposite direction of the house that the man claims is his actual address. I tried to bury those thoughts, assuring myself that I was just overthinking it because I was nervous. A couple minutes passed though, and there was still no house in sight. At this point, I wasn't even sure if I had turned down the right path, but the trees were too close to the sides, so I didn't have much room to turn around anyways. I figured I'd continue down to the end, then call to ask if I had the right place, and turn around there if not. Another minute or two went by before I finally reached the end, as it merged into a small circle driveway next to a house. I drove up to the path that led to the front door and parked the car next to a for sale sign that was put up in the front of the house. Seeing that, I wasn't sure if I had the right house, but I looked over at the front door and it was open and I could see someone further back wave at me. Figuring I was good, I grabbed the bag and started making my way over to the door. As I stepped onto the porch and began putting the bag down, I saw the man again down the hallway that led to the kitchen. He politely asked me if I could set the food down on the kitchen counter, then quickly walked away as if he was in a rush, and then I heard him turn the sink on in the kitchen. Hesitantly, I took a step into the house and looked around. It was decorated with old furniture and accessories, but it almost looked like it was completely unused. I quickly made my way down the hall and into the kitchen, but as soon as I got there, I noticed that the sink was still running, but the man was nowhere in sight. This made chills run down my body, and I quickly set the bag down on the counter and got out of there as quick as I could. I could hear the man yell something from the front door as I got back in my car, but I couldn't understand what he said. I put the car in drive and went back out the way I came. I didn't stop driving until I got to the parking lot of my apartment. Then I pulled my phone out and saw multiple missed calls from that same number. I blocked the number, then opened the delivery app so I could end my deliveries for the night. But that's when I noticed that I had messages from the customer through the app, telling me that I had turned the wrong way and that I was at the wrong house. I went into shock for a moment, realizing that the man that had called me wasn't my actual customer, and the house I was in was just some stranger's house. I called the police immediately and reported everything to them. An officer came to my apartment to go over more details soon after. I had no idea how this man could have known that I was doing a delivery and had been able to see my location. The officer said that my phone had likely been hacked and that the man was probably monitoring everything that I was doing. Hearing this made me really uncomfortable. As if all of that wasn't bad enough, the next day, I was informed that the house I was at was actually vacant, as it was for sale by the owners who had moved out months ago. The man had apparently gotten in through an unlocked window in one of the rooms. As of right now, they still haven't found anything significant that could lead to finding the man, which makes me feel really unsafe. I don't know for sure what the man was trying to do but I think it's a pretty good assumption that he was probably planning on kidnapping me, or maybe even worse. I try not to think about it too much, but I can't help but go over all of the horrible things that could have happened on that night.
I worked as a regular pizza delivery driver during my later years of high school. Because of school, I'd always worked the night shifts on Friday and Saturday. It was a pretty laid back job, and for the most part, I'd just be driving or standing in the shop taking orders on the phone. A couple of my friends worked there too, so I always had someone to talk to. Anyways, it was Friday night, and I'd just gotten back from my last break. The place closes at 1am, so we usually stop accepting orders around 12, as we still have to clean and everything before we leave. It was 11.30, but I figured I'd get a head start on the cleaning just to pass the time. Me and my other two friends were the only ones working that night, and one was finishing up a delivery and the other just went on break after I got back. A couple minutes into cleaning, the phone started ringing, so I picked it up and asked how I could help them. There was an older man on the line, and he asked if we were still open for deliveries. I told him yeah, but we aren't taking any large orders. They said that was okay, and asked for a regular pizza, and gave me the address to deliver it to. About 15 minutes later, the pizza was ready and I boxed it up and got in my car. The address was a little more than 10 minutes away, and I was probably halfway there when I pulled up behind another car stopped at a stop sign on an empty road. I waited for a few seconds, looking around to see why he was stopped for so long. Then I honked my horn gently, assuming that he'd just fallen asleep or something. The car still didn't move, so I started to pull around him, but of course just as I did that, he pressed on the gas and jolted forward down the road. I was a little bit annoyed, but I figured it was just some guy being a dick for fun, so I continued down the road. But a couple minutes later, I passed that same car pulled over on the side of the road with its headlights off. I got a really uncomfortable feeling passing them, like something didn't feel right about it. I checked my mirrors for the rest of the way to the house to make sure he wasn't trying to follow me. Finally, I turned down the address's long driveway that went between a forest of trees. I pulled up to the front of the house and put the car in park. Then I made sure I had everything and went up and knocked on the door. I waited a minute or two, and then an old lady answered and asked me what I was doing. I told her I was delivering a pizza here and recited the address to her that I was given. She said that nobody here ordered a pizza, and I could tell she felt bad for me. I just thanked her and went back to my car. This wasn't the most uncommon thing to happen, as some people would do it as a prank or just give the wrong address on accident. I figured I'd get out of the lady's driveway, then call my friend to have them call the number back and confirm the address. So I started making my way out of the driveway. But as I was making my way down, bright headlights blinded my view from ahead of me. It was so bright, I knew it had to be a car coming towards me, so I quickly pressed on the brakes. I waited for the car to turn off the lights or turn their car around, but after waiting for a little bit, I figured they weren't going to move. I wasn't sure exactly what to do, as I could barely see and I knew the driveway was thin so there was no way I could get around them. I decided to just wait and see what they do first, as I didn't really have any other options. A whole minute went by of both of us just sitting there before they turned their lights completely off. I waited for my eyes to readjust to the darkness, then looked ahead to see where their car was but I couldn't see it. I put the car back in drive and slowly began making my way down, being cautious in case the other car started coming down the driveway again. A few seconds later, I see the car with all its headlights off parked in the middle of the path. I recognized it as the same one that was parked at the stop sign. I guess he had followed me without me noticing. I couldn't see through the windows in the dark, So as I sat there, I started to get pretty anxious and worried that there could be multiple people in there with bad intentions. Then the front driver door opened, and a man got out and began making his way towards me. Halfway to my car, he stopped and began waving at me as if he wanted me to pull up next to him. At this point, 
I'd be lying if I didn't say that I was really starting to freak out. I tried my best to pretend to be calm though, and rolled the car next to him. To my surprise, when I pulled up, he didn't say anything to me. He didn't even look at me as he started walking around my car and eventually stopped right behind me by the trunk of my car. I looked in my rear view mirror, trying to figure out what he was doing and why he was just standing there. A few moments go by as I'm looking at this man, when I suddenly come to a realization and turn my head around to the front. The other three doors of the car swing open and three more men start sprinting towards my car. My adrenaline started pumping, and I stomped on the gas, flooring it and almost hitting one of the men as I turned my car off the driveway. I swerve around their car, nearly hitting several trees before making it back onto the path and eventually out onto the main road. There was nobody else on the road at this time, so I could clearly see in my mirror when the car pulled out onto the road and started making its way towards me. I figured they weren't going to stop unless I could get somewhere that wasn't so isolated, but after 30 seconds, the men turned down a side road. I made it back to work and immediately told my friends what happened. They both convinced me to call the police to at least report it, even though I wasn't able to give much helpful information. An officer came down and I gave an official statement on the incident, and then they left just before we closed. I was surprised to get a call the next day saying that three of the men had been arrested after attempting to rob another car later that night in the same exact driveway that I was in. The men were caught when the lady called the police after having two more people try and deliver food to her that she didn't order. I guess they were using that driveway to lure delivery drivers in and rob them on the way out, since it was a narrow, isolated driveway surrounded by forest. Unfortunately though, the fourth man was able to run through the trees and make it out, and I never received any updates on him in the following days, so I'm not sure if he was ever found. The old lady said though that she was unaware and had never seen them in the driveway before that night. It's pretty crazy that this happened to me, but I'm also proud of myself for how quickly I reacted and how I was able to make it out unharmed. It definitely made my job more stressful though, and soon after I was able to change my shifts to only working during the day on the weekends. I really hope that last guy got caught though, because who knows how many more people could be in those horrifying situations due to his escape. About a year ago, I started working as a delivery driver for DoorDash. I was living with my parents during the summer back home from college. I remember not too long after I started, I decided to work one Friday night because I didn't have anything going on and I knew I could make a lot of money. I started at maybe 5 p.m. and stayed busy throughout the entire night. During the night, I went all around my hometown, which wasn't that big of a city, but still had almost everything you could want in food. I remember that it was about 11 p.m and things were getting much quieter, with not nearly as many restaurants being open anymore. I was getting tired and planning to stop soon, but decided to take another delivery. This one was from McDonald's, and I headed there to pick it up. I arrived at the 24-hour McDonald's in town, and I received the bag of food, then went on my way with delivering it. The address was about 10 minutes away from the McDonald's. I'd been to that area before, but not that particular neighborhood. When I arrived on the street, it was not very well lit, and very dark, and really dark. There were houses sort of far apart from each other, and I could tell this street was a little more rural. I arrived at the address and pulled into the driveway. The house had a really long and narrow driveway with overgrown bushes on each side of it. I got out of my car and walked up to the front step. All of the lights in the house seemed to be off. I knocked on the door, but received no answer. I decided to just leave the food on the front step and then go on my way. I walked out the step and back to my car, which was sitting in the driveway. When I reached my car and got back inside, I decided that I would be done for the night and would go home. I backed out of the driveway that I was in, and before I had reached the street, I noticed something. The car that had been parked at the top of the driveway in front of the garage suddenly turned on. It startled me because I had no idea that anybody had been inside of it. The car then started backing out of the driveway after me at a very fast speed. 
As I drove off down the street, I couldn't help but notice the way the car was driving behind me. It was rather jerky and was speeding up then slowing down, but also following me. I took several turns, with the car making all the same ones. Before long, it became obvious to me that I was being followed by this seemingly reckless driver. As I got close to home, I called my dad and told him that I was being followed and what was going on. He told me to just drive home and not to panic. I did my best to keep calm and drove back home. It took me maybe 10 more minutes to get there. When I arrived, I pulled into the driveway and the car behind me did the same. This made me really nervous, but then I saw my dad walking through the front yard, headed right towards the car in the driveway behind me. My dad's a pretty big guy, about six foot five, and has a pretty large build. Still, I thought he was crazy to approach a car with who knows who inside of it. But almost as quickly as the car had pulled into the driveway, it backed out and sped off into the night. I ran inside feeling much safer now that the car was gone. I'm lucky that my dad was home, because I'm guessing whoever was following me was hoping I would be going to some place alone. I'm about to tell you my creepiest experience from being a food delivery driver. I used to deliver for Uber Eats a couple of years ago. I'd mostly do it on the weekends here and there, and it was a great way for me to make some extra cash. One night, as I was working, I had a fast food delivery to make. I drove to the location, which was a house. It was a smaller house, and when I arrived, it was just after sunset. I parked my car, got out, and walked up to the door. As I was walking up, I took a notice of the house, which seemed pretty average to me. The strange thing was as I got up to the door, it opened. I didn't see anybody at all, but the door just sort of swung open slightly and there was about six inches of a gap. I walked up just outside of it and stood there with the food. I thought maybe somebody had seen me coming up and was going to answer the door but got preoccupied with something. After a few seconds, I decided to knock on the already open door. I didn't want to just walk in or leave the food there with the door open. From the gap that was still open, all I saw was darkness as if every room in the house had the lights off. This seemed a little bit strange and creepy. Then, out of nowhere, I heard a really creepy and disturbing laugh. It was the kind of laugh you would hear in a horror movie or something like that. It sounded like a man was maybe 10 feet away inside the door. There was no way I was sticking around there. I set the food down on the ground right in front of the door. Right after I did this, I heard the laughter getting closer, and then I saw the door start to slowly swing open even further. I didn't stay to see who was behind it at all, and I sprinted away from the house to my car. I drove away and feeling really creeped out, decided to just go home. This experience was scary enough for me, but it didn't end there. The next night, really late, right before I was going to go to bed, my phone started to ring suddenly. With it being after midnight, of course this was odd. I looked at my phone, but it didn't have a number or location listed. I chose not to answer it because of this. But moments later, I got a notification that there was a new voicemail. I clicked on it and played it. When I listened, I heard that same creepy laughter. It was about 10 seconds of non-stop creepy laughter that I had heard at the house the previous night. I was so creeped out by it that I turned off my phone. Since then, I never got another voicemail with that creepy laugh, but I still wonder about who it was. Maybe it was just someone trying to scare me for some reason. And if it was, they sure succeeded. When I was a senior in high school, I used to work for a local restaurant in town as a delivery driver. The only reason I got the job in the first place is because my uncle owned the restaurant and my cousins would work at it, so it was really easy for me to get the job there. It was nice because my uncle would let me almost choose my own hours and had really flexible scheduling. For those reasons, I loved it. I remember that one time, it was nighttime and shortly before we closed. This would have been maybe between 9.30 and 10 p.m. and I got sent out for a delivery all the way across town. It would take me almost 15 minutes to reach the destination, so I knew this would be my last delivery for the night. I drove to the location, and when I reached it, I saw that I wouldn't be able to park in the driveway. There appeared to be several cars already there, blocking any space that I could take in the driveway, so I decided to park across the street on the side of the road that I saw some other cars parked on. I got the food out of my car, then left, and walked across the street to the house. I went up the driveway that had about five cars in it, and then went to knock on the door, but saw that there was a post-it note on it. The note said to leave the food on the step, and my tip was there as well. I could see that there was a $5 bill laying on the step, 
So I left the food there, picked up the money, and then walked back to my car. When I got back inside my car, I was excited to be done with work for the day. All I would have to do is go back to the restaurant and clock out. I began driving back, but just as I started, something didn't feel right, as if I had forgotten something. Maybe I had dropped my phone or wallet on the ground, but I couldn't put my finger on exactly what it was, so I checked my pockets. My phone was there, but my wallet wasn't. I panicked and looked around the seat next to me, but luckily it was on the passenger seat. But just as I was doing so, I had noticed something. I looked in the seat behind me, and then I saw it. There was a guy sitting behind my passenger seat, between the floor and the seat, ducking down. My car was kind of messy all the time, so he was able to really blend in pretty well. When I noticed him, I saw him look up and make eye contact with me at the same time. The guy started to get up. I freaked out and slammed on the brakes, pulling over to the side of the road. I almost spun out from slamming on the brakes so hard, and everything in the car went jerking around, and the guy slid almost to the other seat in the back. Literally the second the car stopped, I flung open the driver's door and ran outside into the middle of the road. The roads were mostly quiet now, but as I got out, I saw a car happen to be driving on the road that I had run into. The car had to basically slam on its brakes to avoid hitting me, and the driver rolled down his window and leaned out to me. Meanwhile, all that was going through my head was getting away from this random guy who was in my car. The guy in my car did not leave and chase after me though. Instead, he moved up into the driver's seat and drove away in my car. The guy who I was standing in the middle of the road blocking asked if I was okay and what was wrong with me. I told him my car had been stolen and to please call the police. After talking to him a little more, the guy was nice enough to pull over and call the police and then waited there until they arrived a short time later. From there, I answered questions from the police and my parents came by a short time later to pick me up. About a week after this, my car was found two cities over, abandoned, but the man who stole it was never found.